Hi, I'm Andrew with Prudent Reviews, and in this video, I break down the pros and cons of the best cookware materials. So if you're shopping for cookware, but you can't decide between stainless steel, cast iron, carbon steel, copper, and the many other options, keep watching. Fully clad stainless steel cookware is made by cladding layers of metals together. The layers extend throughout the pan, and that's why it's called fully clad. This type of cookware is sometimes referred to as multi-clad, clad, or bonded. Stainless steel, while durable, is a poor heat conductor, so it needs to be combined with other highly conductive materials such as aluminum or copper. Typically, fully clad stainless steel cookware has three layers, a stainless steel cooking surface, an aluminum core, and a stainless steel exterior. Since stainless steel is non-reactive and can tolerate high heat, it's the ultimate all-purpose cookware. There are no ingredients or cooking techniques that it can't handle. With carbon steel and cast iron, acidic foods will break down the seasoning and react with the metal. And non-stick cookware is not the best for searing and browning. But with stainless steel, you can cook anything. Because of the steel exterior and thick bonded construction, fully clad stainless steel cookware can last a lifetime. You don't have to worry about it chipping, flaking, or the non-stick coating wearing down. If you treat it right, you'll be able to enjoy it for life. And due to the conductive aluminum or copper core layers, this type of cookware heats quickly and evenly, resulting in faster cooking times and consistent, predictable results. The number one complaint about fully clad stainless steel is that food sticks and it's difficult to clean. Stubborn bits of food, especially if left for a long time, can be tricky to remove. And oils can bake into the steel, especially on the exterior and around the rivets. Although prices vary by brand, good quality stainless steel pans are expensive. But given the fact that this cookware can last for decades, the overall value is great. Stainless steel cookware with an impact bonded base is the same as fully clad stainless steel with one major difference. The conductive core material, such as aluminum or copper, is bonded to the pan's base but not up the sides. The main advantage of impact bonded stainless steel cookware is that it's cheaper than fully clad. The disadvantage is that it doesn't conduct heat evenly because the cookware's sides don't contain aluminum or copper. So if you're sauteing vegetables with an impact bonded pan, the temperature on the flat cooking surface won't be consistent with the temperature up the sides. And that can lead to uneven cooking. Cast iron cookware is heavy duty. It's made from one single piece of metal, including the handle. The material is technically an alloy of approximately 98% iron and 2% carbon. Most people don't know this since cast iron cookware is so rugged, but the carbon content makes it less malleable and actually quite brittle. So to make it more durable, cast iron cookware is made with thick, heavy walls. The thick walls not only increase the cast iron cookware's durability, but they allow it to absorb and retain heat exceptionally well. So when you slap a cold piece of meat on the skillet, the cooking surface stays hot, which allows you to create a nice crispy crust. That's why cast iron is the go-to pan for steaks and burgers. Thinner pans will drop in temperature and give the meat an uneven sear. Once seasoned, cast iron is naturally non-stick. So if you want the benefits of non-stick cooking, but want to avoid synthetic chemicals in the kitchen, this material is a great choice. To be clear, a Teflon coated non-stick pan will always release food the best, but the next best thing is a well-seasoned cast iron. If you want something lightweight and easy to maneuver, I do not recommend cast iron. On average, a 12-inch skillet weighs 8 pounds, and that's without food in it. To create the non-stick barrier between the food and the cooking surface, you'll need to regularly season your cast iron cookware, at least in the beginning. Seasoning involves rubbing it with fat or oil and baking the oils into the metal in the oven. Once seasoned, you'll want to wash it with a chainmail scrubber or sponge with just water. Large amounts of soap can ruin the seasoning. Cast iron is reactive to acidic foods. Prolonged exposure to wine, vinegar, tomato sauce, and other acidic ingredients can break down the seasoning layer, destroy its nonstick properties, and leave behind a metallic taste in your food. Compared to other cookware, cast iron takes longer to heat thanks to its thick walls. However, once it's hot, it retains heat really well. If you want the benefits of cast iron, but don't want to deal with the seasoning process, enameled cast iron is the answer. This type of cookware is made the same way as bare cast iron, but it has an enameled coating to prevent rusting, eliminate the need for seasoning, and make it easier to clean. Dutch ovens are the most common enameled cast iron cookware, but you can find skillets, roasters, brazers, and other pieces too. The main advantage of enameled cast iron compared to bare cast iron is that the enamel coating makes it lower maintenance. You don't need to regularly season the surface and you can wash it with soap without worry. 
Another benefit is that the enamel coating prevents the metal from reacting with acidic foods, so you can cook anything in these pots. In fact, enameled cast iron Dutch ovens are ideal for tomato sauces and chili, two dishes that contain highly acidic ingredients. Unlike cast iron, which is typically dark gray or black, enameled cast iron comes in a wide variety of colors. The enamel is smooth and glossy, and you can find this cookware in just about any color. On the downside, you have to be careful when using certain utensils on the enamel because it can chip or scratch. Use nylon, wood, or silicone utensils to prevent this. Similarly, if you leave a pot in the sink to soak, be careful not to toss any heavy pans or sharp knives on top of it. Although the enamel provides a glossy, non-reactive surface, it's not slick like a well-seasoned cast iron skillet. It's not the best cookware for eggs or other delicate ingredients that tend to stick. Carbon steel cookware is made from 99% iron and 1% carbon, and it functions quite similarly to cast iron. But think of them more like cousins rather than twins. Compared to cast iron, carbon steel is lighter, easier to maneuver, and thinner. It's been a staple in professional kitchens for decades, but only recently has it been gaining popularity among home cooks, for a few reasons. Number one, it's lightweight compared to cast iron. I mentioned the average 12-inch cast iron skillet weighs 8 pounds. The average 12-inch carbon steel skillet only weighs 4.5 pounds. So with carbon steel, it's easier to pour sauces, flip eggs, and transfer meals from the stove to the oven. Number two, it's responsive. So when you turn the knob from high to low or low to high, you don't need to wait minutes for the cooking surface temperature to change. Because of its thinner walls, it responds quickly, helping you avoid overcooking or undercooking your meal. Lastly, it can handle extremely high temperatures for long periods. This is why most high volume restaurants keep an array of cast iron pans on hand. Chefs can leave them on the burners for extended periods without worry. Most carbon steel pans can handle up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit, but some can go even higher. For example, made-in carbon steel is oven safe up to 1200 degrees. The high heat tolerance of carbon steel is especially useful when cooking burgers and steaks and other meats that require intense heat to get a good sear. Like cast iron, carbon steel needs to be seasoned to create a natural nonstick coating. It's an extra step that requires some patience, especially in the beginning as you develop the layers. Carbon steel will rust if it's not properly seasoned. It can also discolor, which causes it to look blotchy. It's heavy duty and rugged, but it's not the most aesthetically pleasing cookware. Similar to cast iron, carbon steel reacts with acidic foods. It's not the best material for cooking meals with large quantities of tomato, wine, vinegar, or lemon. Copper cookware can be intimidating. Not only is it the most expensive cookware, but it also heats up incredibly fast, requiring you to pay close attention while cooking. So what's so special about copper cookware? Well, copper has high thermal conductivity, much higher than aluminum, but it also cools down quickly. Because of that, copper cookware requires a bit of skill. Copper is rarely used for the cooking surface because it reacts with acidic foods. Instead, most copper cookware has copper on the outside and stainless steel or tin on the cooking surface. Copper is one of the most conductive materials, so it heats up quickly and evenly. No waiting around for the pan to get hot. Besides heating up quickly, copper also cools faster than most materials. Its superior responsiveness gives you the ultimate control when cooking. And if you want something strikingly beautiful in your kitchen, then copper is the way to go. It's elegant, warm, and immediately adds some class to your kitchen. The main downside of copper is that it's typically very expensive. Not only is the raw material more expensive than aluminum and steel, but many leading copper cookware brands manufacture their products mostly by hand. Copper is a softer metal. It's prone to tarnishing, scratching, and other cosmetic damage. You'll need to polish it regularly. Also, tin, which is often used to line copper pans, is a soft metal with a low melting point. Metal utensils can damage it fairly easily. Although the tin lining can last for many years, you may eventually need to have your pans retinned. Similarly, copper is prone to corrosion and oxidation. If you've ever seen greenish brown splotches on copper statues or cookware, that's what I'm talking about. The best example is the Statue of Liberty. Most people don't know it's actually made of copper because it's turned green from years of oxidation. To prevent your cookware from oxidizing, you'll need to polish it regularly. There are two main types of nonstick cookware. Pans coated with PTFE, more commonly known as Teflon, and pans coated with a glossy, sand-derived material known as ceramic nonstick. I recently posted a video that covers the differences between these two types, which I'll link to in the description of this video. But the main difference is that PTFE nonstick lasts longer and performs better, 
but it can release harmful fumes if severely overheated for extended periods. Most nonstick pans have an aluminum or hard anodized aluminum base. Both materials conduct heat the same, but hard anodized aluminum is more resistant to corrosion and rusting due to the dark oxide layer that forms on the exterior surface during manufacturing. Regardless of the base and coating materials, the main reason people love nonstick cookware is, you guessed it, food doesn't stick. It's ideal for cooking eggs, pancakes, flaky fish, and other delicate foods. Although carbon steel and cast iron pans can become nonstick over time as the seasoning builds, these are the only true nonstick pans. And because of that, they're by far the most beginner friendly and convenient. Another benefit is the price. Most nonstick pans have an aluminum base, which is relatively inexpensive yet highly conductive material. Aluminum alone isn't a good cookware material because it's reactive to acidic ingredients, but when you coat the cooking surface in a nonstick material, you get a highly functional and affordable pan. If you take care of stainless steel, carbon steel, and cast iron, they will last a lifetime. Unfortunately, this is not the case with nonstick. Most nonstick cookware lasts between two and five years. Eventually, the nonstick coating will wear down and lose its effectiveness, and at that point, you need to replace the pan. Most stainless steel cookware can handle up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and carbon steel and cast iron can tolerate even higher temperatures. With nonstick, you have to keep an eye on the heat. Super high temperatures can degrade the coating, and most manufacturers recommend cooking on low to medium. And never use nonstick under a broiler. Direct exposure to hot flames will degrade the coating. As you probably guessed, there is no best cookware material. Each serves a different purpose and comes with its own pros and cons. If you're just getting started and looking for the essentials, get at least one nonstick pan for eggs. Get one stainless steel skillet for searing and browning, and one stainless steel saucepan or stock pot for boiling and making sauces. If you have the budget for it, go for fully clad stainless steel. Finally, I highly recommend getting one cast iron or carbon steel skillet for roasting, sauteing, braising, frying, and other high heat cooking. Both are versatile, but you only need one. Keep in mind that carbon steel is lighter, but cast iron retains heat better because it's thicker. Enameled cast iron and copper are nice to have in the kitchen, but they aren't necessary. If you want to learn more, I'll link to my full guides on each of these materials in the description of this video. I'll also link to my favorite brands across each category. Those are affiliate links, so I will earn a commission if you click and buy, but at no extra cost to you. If you found this video helpful, check out this video where I highlight the best cookware made in the USA. And don't forget to click the logo to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.